CYM F1H to a world championship season headed to a brand new location, Xiamen, China, for rounds four and five of the 2019 season with a Grand Prix of Xiamen and the Grand Prix of China being raced back to back, sponsored by Senstar. Located on the southeast coast of China, Xiamen is a popular and scenic tourist city in Fujian province, famous for its attractive seascape and boasting a wide gulf with deep water that has made this a major seaport since antiquity. Xiamen means gateway to China, an apt description of this city that blends ancient wonders and a rich historical heritage with a modern, dynamic, bustling atmosphere today. The skyscrapers of the city center stand as a testament to the economic and financial prowess of the city, with Zhongfan Road standing out as a shopping mecca, not to mention the cafes, restaurants and entertainment that the city offers. Xiamen is also rich with ancient temples that continue to make it a major pilgrimage destination, and the abundant natural scenery, parks and mountains make this one of the most visited cities in the People's Republic. The famed Gulangyu Island stands out as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. No cars or bikes are allowed on the island, which features European architecture due to its having been home to foreigners of many nationalities, and various consulates and foreign missions are still located there, along with quaint venues like the Piano Museum. Xiamen is a city that lives and breathes with the sea, popular for its beaches and sailing, which makes it a natural choice for the UIM F1H2O World Championship, which would race two back-to-back -back Grand Prix for the first time on the South China Sea. Crowds flock to the UIM F1H2O race site to take in the boats and meet the teams, those brave enough taking a thrilling ride in the F1H2O two-seater. Now let's take a look at what happened in round three. At the Grand Prix of France in Evian, CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team driver Philip Schiap looked set to break the jinx of Lac Le Mans by taking pole position. The three-time consecutive world champion was off to a great start with a comfortable lead, but on lap 15, Schiap's run came to yet another heartbreaking and familiar end on Lac Le Mans. That moved current Team Sweden and then Team Amaravati driver Jonas Andersson into the lead. Two Team Abu Dhabi drivers battled for second position, Daniel Kamzi passing Sean Torrente. But before the lap could be completed, Maverick F1 Cedric de Guin barrel rolled, bringing out the yellow flag and Al Kamzi was cruelly bumped back down to third. From the restart, Anderson was able to control the pace out front, but was unable to shake off Torrente, his lead fluctuating between two and four seconds. Behind them, Tani Alkamzi and Moritz Stromoy had a titanic battle, Stromoy passing Alkamzi on lap 25 before Alkamzi struck back the next lap. In the end, the Swedish driver held on to take a well-deserved sixth career victory. Tani Alkamzi finished third ahead of Stromoy and Alex Carella finally ended his string of DNFs with sixth place. In the world standings at the end of round three in Evian, Torrente led three points ahead of Anderson in second, with Alcamzi third ahead of Stromoy and Peter Marin. It was going to be a massive weekend of racing with back-to-back -back Grand Prix that would test the endurance, resilience, fitness and discipline of all nine teams and their crews and drivers. With a total of 40 maximum points on offer, Xiamen could create a major shakeup in the world standings ahead and could possibly even decide the world championship. There are 18 drivers from nine teams competing at the Senstar Grand Prix of Xiamen and China. The team to beat is the current team championship leaders and defending world champions Team Abu Dhabi, who field the same lineup under team manager Guido Capellini. Torrente is the current world standings leader and the round two winner in Portimao. He wants to seal his second world championship here and with two races this weekend and 40 points on offer, he may just do it. So position where you are in the championship, you know, is a huge deal now. Um, you know, it's a big
big difference from when I started racing here. When I started racing here, it was hair on fire, let's get to the front and win the race. That's all I care about. I don't even care about anything else. So nowadays, even in, um, in France, I was behind Jonas. I was quicker than Jonas. I could climb up on him anytime I wanted. But unless he made a big mistake, I wasn't going to take the risk to pass him because it's about winning the championship. It's not about winning races. I got plenty of race wins. I got plenty of poles. I only got one world championship, and I want more. So I'm in a good position leading. So they got to come get me. Torrente's teammate, Dani Alcamzi, is currently third in the world standings, and he's gunning for his first world championship. But the locals will be cheering on CTIC F1 Shenzhen, China, led by three-time world champion Philip Xiap, alongside his teammate Peter Morin. Xiap has had a tough year, unable to complete a race so far, but his teammate Morin has been a tower of consistency, finishing regularly in the top five and tied for fourth in the world standings going into Xiamen. Former Team Amaravati is once again Team Sweden, led by team principal and six-time Grand Prix winner Jonas Andersson, who is second in the world standings behind Torrente, but he's on a roll and a good result in China could get him on track for a first ever world title. And it's been a great run so far for a small team with modest resources. Yeah, for, for sure, for, for our team with a small budget, it's uh, difficult because we, if you have a big crash in, in training, you maybe you missed the qualifying, so you need to try to be a little smart and don't push too much. And uh, we are not so many people, so we can fix everything. So hopefully we, we can keep the boat uh, not wet. It should be okay. Victory team has been completely revamped as Alex Carella and Ahmed Al Hamili are out, and last year's world runner-up Eric Stark joins the team. The shape-shifting Eric Stark's meandering journey through successive teams continues, but the defending world number two has shown he is a true contender for the world title, and with the might of a legendary powerboating outfit like Victory Team behind him, anything is possible. Alongside Stark is Italian racer David Del Pin, who returns to UIM F1H2O racing for the first time since last competing in 2015. Four-time world champion Alex Carella has taken Stark's place in Maverick F1 racing alongside team principal Cedric Deguin as Carella seeks to get back to his winning ways in his DAC boat. Emirates Racing Team's Moritz Stromoy is currently tied for fourth in the world standings with Peter Marin of CTIC and she wants to continue her fine form this year as she pushes for a first ever year-end podium. Uh, two races in one weekend is for sure. Uh, a lot of stress on the equipment uh, and on the mechanics. Uh, we will be ready for sure and uh, for us it's about attacking and getting points in both races for sure, but I will take one race at a time. The same circuit will be used for both Grand Prix races, a technical course with tricky waves and unpredictable winds, a very challenging course demanding added concentration and experience. Quite tricky this course, it looks in the drawing easily, but here when the waves and everything, the tide changed the waves and, and the race course, the wind is different than yesterday. It's catching the boat in the back straight and uh, it's very challenging to get the setup right here. Maverick F1's David Delpin was a victim of the tough conditions, flipping over in practice, a sign that teams and drivers had their work cut out for them, preparing their setups for the two races. The Rebellion official qualifying is run over three sessions, the field of 18 reduced to 12 in Q1, then down to six in Q2. In Q3, the last six boats have the circuit to themselves with two laps each to try and set the fastest time in a bid for pole position. In Q1, the points leaders all put in some fast lap times, with Peter Marin topping the field and Alex Carella just behind him, but Carella's teammate Cedric Deguin had technical issues and was off the pace. Eric Stark had a surprisingly tough time of it in Q1, usually a Q3 regular, and he barely made the Q2 cut. His teammate David Delpin was still shaky after his practice session crash. He was out in Q1. Both F1 Atlantic team drivers Duarte Benevente and Alberto Comparato set good lap times and made it into Q2, just ahead of Sharjah team's Philip Roms, who didn't make the cut. In the dying seconds of Q1, Blaze performance driver Greg Foster found the speed he needed to make it in the top 12 at the expense of Emirates Racing's Bartek Marshalek. But Foster's teammate and Blaze performance principal Francesco Cantando didn't make it into Q2. <laughs> Team 
Team Sweden's Eric Eden was also two seconds off the pace. In Q2, Peter Marin continued his fine form to dominate the field yet again. The huge surprise in Q2 was world standings leader and defending world champion Sean Torrente, who couldn't manage to make it into Q3. It just wasn't a good session, honestly, for me. Q1 wasn't even good, I was struggling there. Didn't feel like I had enough push in the motor, that's our normal race motor, it's usually really good. I don't know, we have some learning to do for sure before this afternoon and, uh, and I gotta do a better job. That's all there is to it. More bad news for Team Abu Dhabi as Torrente's teammate Daniel Kamzi was back on the pontoon with electrical problems. His team hustled to fix it and get him back out, but to no avail, he just missed out of a Q3 spot. Eric Stark, who barely scraped through into Q2, didn't have the speed for Q3 either, finishing behind Al Kamzi. Greg Foster's good run came to an end as he finished 10th behind Torrente. Then the F1 Atlantic drivers Benevente and Comparato were also out in Q2. And so the final six drivers ready for the pole position shootout in Q3. First out was Jonas Anderson, who qualified in sixth from Q2. He's fast, but will it be enough? 52.57 is the time to beat. Next out was Moritz Stromoy, but the Norwegian Emirates racing driver was unable to beat Anderson's time. Anderson held on to provisional pole. Alex Corella was the third one out onto the course. He's shown promise back in his DAC boat, but this was the big test. Corella drove like a true champion, looking like his old self, and it was a stunner of a lap, 52.26 seconds. Corella set the new pace with three drivers left. For me, it's already a good start in the top six. Whatever is coming now is, is better for me and my team, for sure. Okay, if we close in pole, for sure it's better, but let's see and wait. Philip Schiap had Chinese expectations on him, under pressure to produce what was needed. What a lap, just seven hundredths of a second behind Corella, beating Anderson and Stromoy. Could he take provisional pole in his second lap? Pushing for that extra .07 seconds, he sped down the trickiest part of the course. He caught air and took off, blowing right over. Wow, that is a full flip. Here it is again on the replay, the ground effect of the air lifting his boat, and he takes flight. It just goes to show the very fine line between smooth speed and disaster. At least the boat lands right side up, he's amazingly unhurt and there's seemingly no damage as the CTIC boat is towed off. Shiap just laughs it off. Yes, the first, first lap I make a mistake, the boat fly uh, and I lose time. I'm very close to Alex and I, I push on maximum on the second lap, but I think too much and the boat, uh, I lose the control. I hear the, the engine and it's very quickly, I have no time for just, and okay, I'm okay. Dry and it's perfect. <laughs> Two-time world champion Sammy Celio of Charger team was next out, but his 53.27 lap time was no good. Last out was Peter Marin, but the CTIC driver broke down, finishing sixth, tough luck. The pole position goes to Alex Carella. It's his 16th pole position and first ever pole since 2017. He is ecstatic. Two long years of work, two long years of bad things and bigger events for me today, bigger events, I think also for my team manager Scott Wiedemann is best pole ever in my life for sure. Shiap with a good finish in Q2, but it remains to be seen if his boat is damaged and if he will need an engine change, which could send him back to the end of the start pontoon with just hours to go before the race. Good result also for Jonas Anderson in third, Marit in good fighting position in fourth, then Celio, while Torrente has a lot of ground to cover as he tries to climb up from P9. With the day's action, drama and excitement behind them, the UIM F1H2O family got to unwind and relax as they were welcomed to Xiamen for the first time with a fabulous gala dinner as drivers, crews, locals and organizers mingled and had fun ahead of the two days of racing to come. Race day, the Sensar Grand Prix of Xiamen. Local hero Xiaop's team CTIC rush to make sure all systems on their boat are operational after that crash. The title. <laughs>
race remains wide open, with a handful of drivers gunning for their first ever world title, including Moritz Stromoy. Well, I'm starting fourth, and it's uh, it will be very, very important, of course, to get off the dock in a good way, and uh, nicely around uh, the first two turns and hopefully stay a bit wide. Yeah, the first corner is always uh, difficult and uh, no matter what strategy you're, you're choosing before, you will always have to change it during that very moment. So we, we see how it goes. Torrente knows he could lose the world standings lead here unless he can move up the field. His nearest rival, Jonas Anderson, has a chance to take the lead in his bid for a first ever world title. Yeah, I mean, we have been starting, uh, I don't remember, three and four this year, and uh, so far one third place and one uh, win, so hopefully if we can get some somebody in the start and then, uh, yeah, try to push, but everybody's very fast, so it's going to be a tough race. But the man to beat at the Grand Prix of Xiamen is pole sitter Alex Carella. The four-time world champion and 15-time Grand Prix winner hasn't won a race since 2017. This is his chance to end the drought with his new team Maverick F1. Starting behind Carella is Xiup, who holds on to P2 despite his Q3 crash. In P3, it's Jonas Anderson, followed by Moritz Stromoy, Sami Celio, Peter Marin, and Daniel Kamzi. Eric Stark and Torrente back in 8th and 9th respectively, with a lot of work ahead of them. Eric Eden starts at the back due to an engine change. The final minutes before the Sense Star Grand Prix of Xiamen, teams and crews complete their adjustments ahead of the race start with under a minute left before the race begins. It's a jump start by CTIC's Peter Marin. He'll be penalized for that as the lights go out and the race is on, the rest of the field shooting off to the commitment buoy. Poor start from Sharjah team Sami Celio in fifth. The Finnish ace sees Moritz Stromoy surge ahead to his left as he's left in her spray. Possibly thrown off by his teammate Marin's jump start is Philip Schiap, who is left behind by Alex Carella and then Jonas Anderson on the starboard, passing Schiap. Carella on the inside catches up with Marin and passes the Frenchman. Jonas Anderson right behind Carella with Marin on the outside. Stromoy in fourth and Schiap catching up as he comes in tight on the inside of the commitment buoy and the field of 18 drivers enters the circuit. As Celio struggles in the spray, he's passed by Daniel Kamzi and Eric Stark to his right, the Finnish two-time world champion off to a shaky start. Up ahead, Anderson locks horns with Peter Marin, trying to take second position from the Frenchman. Marin knows he will be penalized for the jump start, which means he has to fight even harder as he takes Anderson on in that drag race down the open straightaway. Just look at that speed. Marin finds the clean water on the outside to beat Anderson and claims second position behind Corella. Further back, Sean Torrente, who started in P9 on the pontoon, is already up in sixth. He's pushing Xi up for fifth. Torrente zeroes in on Shiap, finds the speed on the outside to handily pass Shiap and sets his sights on Moritz Stromoy in fourth place. Another big mover in the field is Eric Eden. The Team Sweden driver has moved up from the back and overhauls Bartek Marshalek to move into 14th position. The man firmly in control of this race, however, is Alex Carella. He extends his lead as he goes around the yellow right-hander. Meanwhile, Thani Alkamzi is catching up with his Abu Dhabi teammate Sean Torrente. Alkamzi is on the inside down that long straightaway. The two teammates do battle, but Alkamzi has the speed around that corner and he takes fifth as he shuts Torrente out, shooting off and bumping the American down to sixth. As Carella opens a 1.68 second lead over Marin and, more importantly, a 5.5 second lead over Anderson, former Maverick F1 driver Eric Stark of Victory is passed by Blaze Performance driver Greg Foster and F1 Atlantic driver Alberto Comparato, the world number two struggling to find his form here. But Stark's woes continue as he's then pursued by Portuguese F1 Atlantic veteran Duarte Benevente who overhauls Stark, dropping him yet another spot in his first race with Victory Team. Benevente then sets his target on Bartek Marsalek, but the Polish Emirates racing driver hangs in there and doesn't let Benevente pass. Moritz Stromoy has had a great season and she's putting in yet another solid performance as the Norwegian, who is fourth in the world standings, holds off the likes of Alkamzi, Torrente and Schiap. Three drivers with four... <laughs>
world titles and 25 Grand Prix wins between them. Blaze performance driver Francesco Cantando had a good start up in 11th from P15 on the pontoon. He takes on his teammate Greg Foster as the two fight for 10th. But coming up behind them is Eric Eden. Greg Foster makes a mistake as Eden pounces. The Team Sweden driver moves up to 11th. Jonas Anderson is effectively in P2, considering Morin's impending penalty, but Anderson is feeling the pressure from Moritz Stromoy, who's looking for an opportunity to pass her fellow Scandinavian. Philip Schiap hasn't been able to finish a race all year, the three-time world champion trying to finally get on the board here in 2019 as he closes in on Daniel Kamzi, trying to push for the top five, a 1.31 second gap to close for the Frenchman in lap seven. Peter Morin needs as good a result as possible as he pushes hard on Corella. The two separated from the rest of the field by over 12 seconds. Morin trying to lap as many boats as he can to make up for the penalty he will receive at the end of the race. Trouble for Dani Alcamzi, the Emirati veteran and world number three slowing down as he's passed by Philip Schiap. Alcamzi heads back to the pontoon, retiring with engine failure. Just past the halfway mark on lap 16, Corella firmly in the lead, more than 20 seconds up on Jonas Anderson, with Stromoy just a second and a half behind Anderson, then Schiap and Torrente. Further down the field, Italian Alberto Comparato is having a very good race in eighth, looking to equal, if not improve, on his performance in Portimao, where he finished eighth, earning three points. In lap 18, veteran multiple Grand Prix winner Francesco Cantando is out of the race, the Italian unable to complete a race so far this year. In lap 24, Jonas Anderson maintaining second place with a shot at leading the world standings if he can stave off Stromoy. Bad news for local fans, it's yet more heartbreak for Schiap, his third DNF of the year. I think it's engine problem again. But I don't know, no power. Celio is also out of the race. He's managed to earn only one point in three races this year. F1 Atlantic's number nine boat, Alberto Comparato, giving a great performance on target for more points. Also good race for the sole remaining Blaze performance driver, Greg Foster, who has passed Eric Eden to move into 11th. Just a couple laps left in the race, and Stromoy in third, not letting up the pressure on Jonas Anderson, but the veteran has the experience to fend off the challenge. It's the final lap. Alex Corella is so close to a win. He is a lap up on Anderson, and all he has to do is bring it home. Corella wins his 16th career Grand Prix and his first race since 2017. Great win for him and for Maverick F1. A faultless start to finish performance for the four time world champion. There are the results Anderson runner up earning 50. Points, Stromoy third, Torrente up in fourth after the exits of Alcamzi and Schiap. Peter Marin's jump start penalty drops him to fifth. Great result for Greg Foster sixth, Comparato with his best ever result in seventh, then Eden, Marshalek, and Benevente all earning points. Stark just out in 11th, Roms, Deguin, and Delpin all managed to finish the race. In the world team standings, Team Abu Dhabi maintained their dominance on 71 points, but Team Sweden are just 21 points behind, with Emirates racing in third, CTIC fourth, Maverick shoot up to fifth. I had a good start, good pull off from the dock, finally we found a problem. And I'm super happy to be on the podium. I tried uh, a little bit to push Jonas, but not too much because I didn't want to lose to the guys pushing from behind. So, no, I'm super happy to be on the podium. And uh, third now in the championship. And uh, yeah, it's good. Very good. The big news is that Jonas Anderson's runner-up performance puts him on top of the world standings at the end of round four. The Swede on 47 points, three ahead of Torrente on 44, then it's Stromoy in third on 28. Alcamzi drops to fourth, Corella up in fifth, looking at a possible year-end podium. Ah, it's fantastic. We are a small team and we have been working really, really hard and we were... the
championship and uh, I'm really 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 happy and all the people that uh, helped me here and home the people they know they know who they are it's fantastic that we can do this by so little people but the day belongs to Alex Gorilla and Maverick F1 yeah, it was uh, was uh, was difficult this morning. Qualify after in the race, I had Peter Morin behind me, but he, he make a jump start, so I know that he was uh, one lap uh, behind. But okay, I want to finish uh, after a long time. I didn't want to leave him go, and I just want to keep pushing and finish first this race. And uh, all my team deserve this. They work uh, one month like crazy. Three there, they working like crazy with what we have, and so it's uh, unbelievable. I mean. Just a special, special day for me. That concludes round four. The very next day would be round five, the Sandstar Grand Prix of China. See you there. Wow, 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 wow.